Hey, welcome to a very scuffed sorceress guide post COVID. So I still have a really, really bad cough. There is a lot of um, really awkward editing, jump cuts and shit in this video. And that's purely because I've had coughing fits sort of midway through explaining something and had to start again. It's yeah, it, it sucks, but I, you know, making this video too was more important to me than just sort of lying down in bed really. So there's that. So what is cast a sorceress? The I'd say the archetype of it is a hard casting, hard hitting caster. So you're squishy, you might not be very mobile, but if you are given three seconds of freedom, something will die. So you're thinking similar to Destruction Warlocks from World of Warcraft, sort of, you know, Cataclysm, Wrath of the Lich King, Mr. Pandaria area, where there were lots of hard cast, Chaos Bolt hit you, did a lot of damage. You're thinking Black Mage from Final Fantasy with the Fire Fours. Um, you're thinking of like, you know, any kind of hard caster in the game that just cast nukes. So the way this build works is centered around the Z identity or Z if you live in the United Kingdom of Sorceress, which increases the damage and decreases the cast time of your spells. This makes the long cast on Sorceress actually usable. And it's pretty much the only time they use the Born PvP. Any other time you should get interrupted by anyone with half a grain of intelligence, let's say. So you build your gauge up, you activate the identity, and then you basically kill something. Like you will almost always kill something inside of it, or you will kill multiple people inside of it. That's exactly how this build works. This is not the meta build for Sorceress. It might not ever be the meta build. But by God, I'm going to make it work. But if you want the meta build, um, this video is useless to you because I will not cover the meta build in this video. I am only casting, I'm only uh, covering the caster build and mostly because people requested it. Outside, outside of your identity, your main focus is to peel and basically be like a pseudo enabler support because Sorceress, even with its meta build, it does not do the kind of damage summon it does, like with the same account, the same kind of ease. So, S Summoner is more of a carry, Sorceress is more of an enabler, but has decent, really good enabler damage, like better than Battlemaster's enabler damage, let's say, which obviously is not a very high bar. So, you're basically peeling, you're building gauge, and you're looking for those double windows where you can get. Um, somebody knocked up twice, they've used their role, and you can activate your identity and nuke them. That's it. That's exact. That's the pure base of, uh, basic explanation of how this build works. So I'm going to talk you through the build quickly. Um, first thing to know, obviously, my client is in Korean. I do have, I will obviously explain everything in English, and there is a link to an English build in the description. So first of all, the stats. You've got two options here. You can go main stat specialty, which is this one or you can go um, main, spat, agi uh, main stat agility. Agility gives you more CDR, lets you move faster, allows you to play a little bit safer, also reduces the CD on your roll. Spec is for damage. For those of you that have played summoner before, treat this similar to how you treat agility and spec on summoner. Take agility to the point that you are comfortable and then you put the rest in spec. So if you wanna go, you know, 1K agility 250 spec, you might as well play the other build. Um, if you want to go like 700 agility, if you want to go like main stat and go like 750 agility, 500 spec, that's absolutely fine. And also agility has more consistent value over the game than spec does. So my actual recommendation is to go agility um, for main stat and then specialty. And obviously I do have the one point crit meme. First of all, I do apologize going through this uh, build because I have recently had COVID as some of you might know and so i'm coughing quite a bit still so there might be a lot of jump cutting so the first skill we're going to go through is your is your call is this is called cold call in english and i'll just explain these tripods to you so what cold call basically does is it spawns an orb at a location that causes a frostbite effect on the opponent if they're in it long enough it just uh, outright freezes them so basically what uh, the first tripod does on your q is it basically reduces enemy attack speed by 20% and movement speed by 40%. It's just standard frostbite um, CC. The other two, this is a 50% mana reduction. Um, and this is 30% increased gauge. 
don't bother with either of these two, just take this one. You have enough um, gauge regen if you're playing properly. On the second tier, you do have Strengthening Domination is the first one. Imperfect Domination is the second one. And Enhanced Penetration is the third one. So, you always take Imperfect Domination as the middle tripod. And the reason for this is it increases... Because... Um, cold Call is normally a prep ability, so you hold it down, and then it casts. Or it casts as long as you're holding it down, whichever you want to call it. So this basically makes that instant, and that's why the other two are just not viable for that reason alone, because you don't want to get into up to cost casting Cold Call. It does a lot of damage, and damage is something you are lacking outside of your identity as Caster Sork. And instant casts, like... In every single MMORPG I've played, if there's ever been an option to make your cast instant, you've always taken it, and this is no exception. The last two, t the last tier is very similar, actually, on a lot of sorceress abilities. So this one is just a flat. When the spell hits, it does 50% uh, increased damage to them, and this is 130% increased uh, crit attack. If you're wondering why my mouse keeps disappearing or screen and stuff recently, it's because um, I've written an English description of all the tool tips in the notepad to make it easier to do this video so i'm constantly going back to check that because um yeah my hangle reading is not the best and it would just take it just be a nightmare i don't want to get anything wrong this is lightning funnel or in korean i believe it's literally called lightning shock um basically what this ability does with the tripods applied to it is it casts a ball similar to cold call at a location and then at that location, it will start pulsing damage. If somebody walks into it or is caught by it, it inflicts a stagger on them. And there is a 10% chance for every tick of the stagger to hard stiff uh, CC them. So for those that are kind of new to like different CCs and stuff, the hard stiff is basically a stun. It's a type of, it's any type of stun or paralysis. Paralysis and stun basically do the same thing in this game. Now, the reason why people hate this ability so much, including me, is because it has a pod that um, that you use on it that is in a lot of other classes and abilities. And basically, it's an RNG pod. This ability is either the most broken thing in the game, or it's just damage. It's, it's And in my opinion, Lightning Funnel 8 points doesn't do a lot of damage. So obviously, with it being 10% charts with every tick, you might get a hard stagger on every single time you use this. You might not get one all game. It's like, it's a 1 in 10 chance, so you will get them. I'd be very surprised if you don't. But, it's why people hate this. You've got your mana reduction pod there. And then in the middle, you've got... Um, a utility ability, basically. This is similar to a Wind Whisper for Battle Master. It's like a 6% attack speed buff for... Sorry, it's a 6% damage buff for your team. I call it attack speed at first because um, this is a very similar icon to the one that normally gives 6% um, attack speed or quick hands, which lets you cast off faster. Uh, the second tier is it's a wide attack, so that's your standard 30% range increase. You've also got um, this is called. I don't really know how to say this one actually in English. I've written it in the notepad in Korean as well. I'm going to say um, speed boost. Yeah, I'm just going to call it speed boost. When you cast it, you get a 20% movement speed increase. And this makes it last two seconds longer. Just take this one. Range is always, always, always good on, on most abilities in this game. If there's a wide attack pod, you just take it. It's because it's so strong and it increases zoning potential, which allows you to control the way the game is played on the map. You can lock players out of being able to engage. You can isolate people. It, wide attack is so strong that I can't even put it into words why you always take you almost always take this pod if it's available on an ability. Um, this is kind of going to be almost an immediate contradiction. I'll get to that in a second. So this is similar to the first tier on a lot of other sorcerer spells. 4% uh, CDR, cooldown reduction, 50% reduced mana, and 30% increased um, identity gauge generation. So the contradiction, there is a wide attack pod here. I didn't take it. I'll tell you why I didn't take it. The reason being is that this middle pod is a 30% increased damage to this ability. And it's also a knock up. You are running for your life a lot with this build. You do not nearly have the same 
1v1 escape self pill potential that you do on the standard sorceress build, which is why this build is so bad to play in hard games. And why it fits into so few comps. Because, like, you have literally no... You, you just have no agility and your self pill is crap. So... This is why you take this, because it basically, basically you just cast it and it will just, you know, it will peel people off you, assuming that they haven't, you know, tenacity podded their way through it. Because the first part of it is a stagger, so they can literally, like, like a, um, like a battle master could just ascending dragon kick for it. And a summoner could just hold down, you know, wind birds or wing spirit and it will make them immune to the first part of this. But it won't make them immune to the knock up if the second part of the wave hits them. You ignore these other two pods for that reason. You take this for the CC. This one is a... So for five seconds, it does a ticking fire damage to them. You just take this over this one because it's more consistent. You're very rarely going to use this on someone that's stun immune. And for what this uh, pod is, by the way, it's, um, it's a standard fine weakness pod. So 60% increased damage to anything that's immune to stun. But this is more consistent because, you know... You know, you're going to self pill of yourself, the chances are um, they are not going to be stun immune. This is one of my favorite abilities in the game. So this is called, in English, Inferno, according to my notepad. So this basically casts a pillar of fire at the target location. And the range in it is actually really good. So to go through these pods real quick, um, this is your main pod in every situation. This is not flexible. This basically casts the ability half a second faster. And for those used to playing MMOs or really any kind of competitive game online, you know that half a second is a really long time. So, I mean, the amount of talents and pods you take to make stuff like half a second faster is unreal. So, yeah, you take that. This is a PvE pod. You don't take this. It increases the um, part break, I believe it's called, on EU and NA. And, or destruction on Russia and Korea. Um, so yeah, it's not PvE, you don't take that. This is a fire dot. You don't typically use Inferno for the for damage. It does okay damage. It's just you don't use it for damage. You use it for peel, CC, zoning, etc, etc. So uh, these pods, basically what this pod does is after three, three seconds after the uh, pillar erupts, it casts a second explosion for 40% damage. This is just, this is another uh, find weakness pod, but it's 30% instead of 60 um, what this one does is it allows you to have two charges of the ability. It's sound and they remain stunned whilst you use it as well. So if you pillar someone that's stunned, it's not going to break the stun on them. So this is really good. For example, when you see a blaster do their space bar, stun, bomb, flamethrower, or whatever combo, sometimes knocking people up really pisses the blaster off because they roll out of it. And then they they get out before the bomb explodes. This stops that happening. But because, obviously, that is an example of a very niche situation, this is the most consistent pod you can take with this. So, moving on to the last um, tier, if you will, of Tripods and Inferno. This is a uh, prep. It's a standard prep pod. So, what prep pods normally do is they let you either have less CD on something or let you cast it faster. This one lets you cast it faster. But... It also does 25% increased damage on Inferno. And there are so many reasons you take this over the other one that I'm going to get to in a second. But I believe this is why it's a tier 3 pod, because it also does damage. So this is the other pod. Never, ever, 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 ever take this tripod. What it does is, first of all, it uh, increases the time it takes to cast Inferno. Second of all... It increases the mana cost of Inferno by 25% when Sorceress already has mana issues. And third of all, it's all that shit for a 60% damage increase. Get fucked. No way. Do not take this pod. Ever. If I see you take this pod, I'm going to slap you upside the head. We now move on to God's Wrath or Scourge, whichever you want to call it, to be honest. I call it Scourge personally. Wide attack. Obviously, radius increase. You take that almost every time you see it. So, there you go. Mana reduction. It's just not competitive with the other two. Even though Sork has mana issues. I know, I know. But if you take every pod that... Basically, if you take every pod that solves your mana issues, you do no fucking damage, bro. Anyway, this... I'm still not actually sure about this pod. It's another one of those RNG pods. So, it has a 15% chance to apply an Electroshock. An Electroshock is a hard stiff. It's a paralysis. 
It's similar to the Electro Ball on Summoner. The reason why I'm not sure about this is because I don't know if this actually benefits from the dot that you get from this ability using Scourge that I'll get to in a moment. Because it could actually be really good. But range, especially when you're playing Caster Sork, so you kind of need this to land 100%. Anything that's going to help you land it, yeah. I'm going to absolutely pass on that, especially when... You typically use Scourge on people that have double rolled, so you don't need a stun anyway. So, moving on to the tier 2 pods of Scourge. This is not god awful, but it's the ones, ones where they have to stay where they are for it to actually do its damage, and it's just not competitive with the other two overall. So, playing Castle Sork, you're always looking at these two. This one, so I'm going to say straight off the bat, the first one is a safer pick. You will land this way more than you'll land this. This basically causes a 16 game meters um, attack. So it attacks basically in a diagonal straight line. And also on top of that, it does 10% increased damage. This is the safer one to pick because it's so much easier to land. It's instant. And also what this pod does is it makes the time taken to cast Scourge uh, less because it's, um, it's a prep ability. So it's got a cast animation, but no cast bar. This one, on the other hand, is keep standard Scourge, so it has a cast bar. So this we call it red. We call it red Scourge and blue Scourge. This is red Scourge. This is blue Scourge. This one does more damage. This one is safer. The reason why I like taking the middle one is because it does so much damage. It increases the damage of the ability. Sorry, wrong pod over highlighted. It increases the damage by twenty percent. Has a 6.5 meter cast circular radius, which is increased by 20%. So that is, do the math, probably about 7.7 .7 meters, unless I'm really stupid. Yeah, around that, 7.7 7 .7 to 8, so we call it. So, and it does a dart and lightning strikes again, and it just looks so cool. You can take either of these two. When I started playing Caster Sork, I took this one pretty much all the time. So this does more damage and is likely to hit boat hit multiple targets because if they're not standing like you know lined up, you're only going to hit one with this. You can hit more than one with this. You can hit all three. And this is another tier three set of pods that are again you see them in a lot of the sorceress abilities. This one increases the critical damage of the ability, not the chance, by 160 percent. Uh, this is Intelligent Arcanist, and what this does is it increases the damage of the ability by 55%. But if you're in your identity, it will also stack another 20% on top of that. So you've got that, plus your identity uh, damage buff and cast time reduction, plus obviously the scaling from spec. This is what makes the, uh, you know, 50, 60k Skirtships that um, show up in my summoner montage. Sorry, Sorceress montages. Now, this is uh, Reverse Gravity. This is your strongest self-pill for the main reason that it creates a zone around yourself that if anyone walks into without a hard stiff up, it's going to knock them up. And also because it's one of the few super armors you actually have. So I will occasionally like to cast this for a lot of my um, damage setups that will there's an example of me using this in a damage shot for a double kill that I'll show after this part. Um, so that's just what makes this so good. It's it's got super armor and sorceress is really short on super armor, and you know it's it's a great self pill. Wide attack pod, obviously. There's a twenty percent one, um, but if you want to know what the other ones are. Three second cooldown reduction and inside the basically it casts like a pillar of fire around yourself. Inside that fire does uh, damage. This basically makes it tick 0.3 seconds faster. Tier 2, this is a straight um, case of CC versus damage um, selection. I am undecided at the moment actually still on this tier. This one does damage, increases the damage of the ability by 30%. This one on the other hand applies a debuff to them that increases the damage they take by 40%. Now, I'm currently playing Sorceress on Korea with 220 ping, so I kind of like to take this one. 
why does it take me back to the top? Um, I kind of like take this one. The reason being is because sometimes I will do gravity, identity, scourge. Or, yeah, the gravity, identity, scourge, bomb. And that's very t that's timing is very tight when it's only three seconds, even with the cast time buff, when you have 220 ping. But I think this is actually stronger than the fire for Caster Sorceress. Because you can use it for a lot of your setups anyway, and it's going to increase the damage by 40%. You're going to hit hard, bro. This is, if this was a standard Frostbite pod, it might actually be good. But it's not. It's another one of those ones where you wonder why would you ever take this. This would be actually viable, possibly, if it was a standard Frostbite pod. But it's not. It increases the prep time by 0.6 seconds. That's the wind up animation to cast the ability. So it's already bad. I don't even need to read the rest of this. It's already bad, but I will anyway because I'm transparent like that. So I believe after... it cre Oh yeah, it creates a frost field for two seconds. And I have not done an English translation of this one, so I'm still reading it, by the way. It creates a frost field for two seconds. And inside that frost field, it will freeze them for four seconds. So it's got a hard stiff in it, but with a 0 0.6 prep time and only a tier one super armor, mm, you're asking for trouble. Just take that or that, to be honest. So this would be something I would consider, possibly, if it was a standard frostbite pod, but it's not. I have no idea how viable this is. You will have to wait for Lino's guide on that one. Or, or Miliaki's guide. I don't know how you pronounce your name. Sorry, bro. But you know who you are. Um, the reason why I don't like this is because it increases the prep time by, half, by just over half a second. And by the way, I have no English translation written down for this. So I'm reading it in Korean. Uh, um, so increase the prep times. That's the wind up animation to cast the ability by half a second. It creates a frost field for two seconds. That can freeze for four seconds so that's a four second hard stiff i'm guessing let me put an ult over it okay it's two second hard stiff because it's pvp i was, I was just checking that one to make sure that wasn't different in pvp but yeah um so there, it's two second hard stiff in pvp i don't think that's worth it personally but someone might disagree and so therefore i'm not going to say don't take it but it wouldn't be something i would consider just because it has increased prep time so we now move on to what, in my opinion, is one of the prettiest abilities in the game. It looks gorgeous. It's the little flower crystal thing that spawns and then explodes. So you've got your standard CDR pod. It's five seconds reduction. Again, CDR pod's always really good. You can just take that, to be honest. Um, this is a two second, This sorry, this is a two meter range pod. This is two meters, this lets you cast it two meters further from where your character is. It doesn't increase the range of the explosion by two meters. This is a mana pod that I haven't, don't think I've actually seen before. It's very interesting. So when you cast it, it instantly restores 6% mana. If you take Blast Wave, it restores an extra 3% mana. So 6% of PvP mana is like 800 to 900 mana. The reason why this pod is really bad is because it forces you to take Blast Wave. And I will explain later why Blast Wave is bad. Blast Wave is basically that. This is the only viable pod on this tier for Caster Sorceress. Increases flat damage by 35%. That's it. It's simple. This one is a PvE pod. This one increases, I believe, crit damage by 100%. I'm actually just going to read it. Yeah, it's crit damage by 100%. Um, you have one crit. I have one crit. So, you know, this is uh, one of those cases of, you know, I say you always take all the crit pods. You take none of them. Yeah, you take none of them again. Now, this tier... I still don't really understand that much because, and the reason for that is I've I've never played Blast Wave. So what this does is it does one large explosion. What this one does is three smaller ones. I have no idea which is better, but I am going to go with the nuke being the strongest option, and the reason being is that you can chain CCs together, put the crystal down, the crystal evolves to stage three and explodes. That's it. This one, they get hit by the first one, they avoid the other two. It will, It's already done less damage than this one. So I am going to say this is probably closer to a GBG or Island pod than it is to a 3v3 pod. Reading it, in it's terrible Korean, I don't think it's bad. But I don't think it's consistent as this. But I don't think this would be as good as this in GBG. So stay tuned on that one for some for Miliaki's for uh, sorceress guard.
Oh god, would you believe it? We're actually uh we're actually finally there. So this is the um, you have two options here that I will go through together, even though I don't really play this one anymore. This is bomb. Literally just called bomb. What this basically does is it shoot this is the thing that shoots out a fireball, basically. And when that fire and then that fireball explodes when it hits either the max range or it hits a target, whichever comes first. PVE pod, standard 50% mana reduction pod, fire damage dot top pod. Fire dot pod, obviously, just consistent. You don't take mana reduction pods, that's PVE. So, second tier, find weakness. This is one of the few times I take it, and this is because this is one of the few times I get value out of it. Because I tend to do all my damage into double knockdowns and stun immune targets when I'm inside identity. Or targets that have just been stunned. Otherwise, I wouldn't get the cast off if they weren't. This is one of the times that you can guarantee your value out of this. And the fact that the other two options are really fucking crap. So, the middle one basically does... I don't really know how to explain it. It basically... If you know um, Battle Master Tornado, it does something like Battle Master Tornado. It sucks them in, but the damage comes after the three seconds. It's the last bit that will do the most damage. If they avoid that, which they very often will, it's just not as good as that, which is a flat 30% increase for the sake of 20% in that. Like, this is only good because obviously it's got a stagger in it, but obviously, you know, it. you need the damage. This is This is your damage window. You need all the damage you can get. This one I've never used before, but I have seen it in uh, some of Typhoon's videos. It's basically just waves of flames. It's nothing special, nothing to be interested about, and nothing to really care about. You've probably seen these two in another ability. It's pretty much the same thing again. You've got Arcane Genius, you've got um, Arcane Genius or Arcane Intellect, whichever one you want to call it, which is 50% damage increase to the spell. And then another 20% if you're inside your identity. This is a flat 140% uh, crit damage increase. So obviously one crit, you don't take it. This is the ability that provides the, shall we say, basis to why this build was called Doomsday. Because this ability is called the end of the world or Judgment Day. I think that's one of the coolest names and one of the coolest abilities in the entire game but the problem is bomb is more consistent so i swapped from using this to bomb but if you want but this is a fun build so if you want to have fun play me play judgment day bro it looks great it's one of the best looking abilities in the game so we'll go for the usual drill two meter range increase that's a oh i should probably actually um explain a bit further it's two meters again from you so it's not a two meter radius increase it's not like wide attack uh then the mana pod and the fire dot pod. Some of these tool tips I've actually now got to read in in, uh, in Korean because I haven't written them in English in Notepad because I haven't covered. I wasn't planning to cover this spell. So normally, what this ability does is it casts meteors in a circle at a targeted location. So this basically makes them fall three three um, three seconds faster and does fifteen percent increased damage. This is the pod that you would take if you're going to play Judgment Day, in my opinion. It's just a flat 25, it does one meteor instead of several, and it's 25% damage. Um, this one is just lots of little damage and requires um, people to stay in the location to keep getting hit. Because, obviously, no one's going to stand there for two and a half seconds and let themselves get pelted by 24 meteors. Um, yeah, just take just take the big asteroid and go, and go burr. Again... This is the exact same thing as you saw in Bomb. It's the exact same last two pods. 55% damage increase, next to 20% if you're in identity, 160% crit damage. Awakening wise, whilst we're here, this is the only one. It's a uh, stagger, sucks people in, does damage. Um, I n prefer not to use this if I have gauge because you can get almost always a full gauge from using this ultimate. So you'll want to use it when you want to fill gauge fast. It's really good to use in the last 60 seconds for that reason. Or if you're on Korea, 30 seconds. Because it will guarantee that you've got a caster window inside the buff. And caster sorceress can be game changing in those last 30 seconds. There are so many games I've triple killed or double killed in the last second. Because 
if I land anything inside that buff with identity up, you are dead. You will just die. It does, you know, I'll do 102, 160k damage in a single window. You're dead, bro. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you like the guide. This was a bit of a long one. If you want to see some Sorceress gameplay, there are plenty of videos on my channel of me playing Sorceress. I recommend Toffee Latte for version 2. Um, it's got lots of explosions and the entire video is, well, all, the entire video except for one clip is done with Doomsday builds. So yeah, you'll see some big numbers and you'll see how fun it is to actually play. But other than that, I'm going to sign off here. Uh, there will be a guide by Miliaki up soon, which is for the more serious Sorceress players. It's going to have the more melee builds, stuff like that covered. I'm going to choose not to cover that because I don't play melee Sorceress that often. I don't actually enjoy melee Sorceress that much. I only enjoy the caster build. And I will find a way to make this work. I don't care what I have to tell my teammates to play. I will make this work. So I will be focusing on optimizing caster Sorceress as opposed to melee Sorceress. Mediaki is the guy you're going to go to, or Lin, oh, Lino, their, link, their YouTube channels are in the description. They're the people you want to go to if you want uh, more Sorceress content. Mediaki's guide will be up soon. But other than that, take care and please have a very, very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays to you if you do not celebrate Christmas. Take care.